It is simply amazing how good budget keyboards have gotten. And just to be clear, when I say budget keyboard, I'm kind of classing it around the $50 range. And the new keyboard from Red Dragon being the FlexCat Pro, if I'm saying that right, truly puts my words into light and shines some perspective on it. Puts my words into perspective and shines some light on it. I worded that completely wrong. It's just amazing how far this space has come along. So as far as what you get inside your box, you're going to get your keycap and switch puller because yes, this keyboard is hot swap. You get your USB-C to A cable, which can also be made to a C to C cable with this little adapter that's just attached to the cable there. Absolutely love that little touch, which more manufacturers would do something like that. Super cool touch. Over here, you get four extra switches in case maybe you bend a pin that can't be bent back. We'll talk a lot more about these switches later on in the video. Some stickers and then your paperwork. But I also want to give you a quick look over of the box. As you're seeing right here, you can kind of break down a lot of what this is packing. And then when I swing it around to the back side, you can see some of the features and a little sneak peek at this down there. I mean, just looking at what this keyboard's packing on the packaging, it's like Holy smokes, seriously, on a budget keyboard? So before we dive any further in this video and talk about some of the extra features, functions packed into it, I wanna give you the sound test. Again, talking about these switches that you're using in here, they're actually Red Dragon branded and oh my gosh, they feel so good. So let me go on and take my mic off. I'm gonna set it right here on my not so budget mouse. I'm gonna set that right there, right in the middle of the keyboard. Let's listen to this. Now, as many as you know out there, I am no keyboardist by any means. I love a good quality product out of the box and with the experience of all the keyboards I've tested and used, this sounds amazing to me. There's no pinging, there's no ringing, there's no scratchiness, but it feels just as good as it sounds. Stick around. I'll get more into that later. But one thing I would like to show you right now is the hot swap ability of this keyboard. As you see, that PCB is actually five pin hot swap. Same with the switches. You're using traditional five pin switches. So if you wanna use any other switch out there just about, you can. And it's so cool seeing Red Dragon use traditional five pin rather than their own branded switches as these are, but before you could never swap them out. Now you have traditional switches and a traditional five pin PCB. And my goodness, are these stabs generously lubed. All right, so now that I gave you that sound test, we talked about the switches. I wanna talk about the features and functions of this board and then we'll roll into the build of it. But you saw, again, the switches, the five pin hot swap and all that. As far as the keycaps here, if I can get one off with just my hand, they are simple double shot ABS. And they do have a slight slick feeling to them. As you can see, they have a little bit of gloss across them, but they're not the traditional ABS where they're gonna wear out the fonts and whatnot. So they do feel good, but same right along with many other Red Dragon keyboards, their font is a little iffy, like that D over there, the Q, they got that space in there. I don't know. I'd say swap out your own keycaps and give it a little extra pizzazz. But anyways, that's just cosmetic. Come on over here to the side. You have your USB dongle storage. Again, because this keyboard's wireless, it's still plugged into my PC over there. On the other side, you got your USB-C port for whenever you want to charge it or use it plugged in while it's charging. 2.4 in Bluetooth. Now, as far as branding on the keyboard, you can see it states Red Dragon right there on that white bar. And then on the back side, it says ready for battle with Red Dragon, which I just think looks pretty corny. Along with that white bar, I wish it was just solid black, maybe a little more simplistic in my personal opinion. Again, cosmetic and personal preference. But I wanna show you turning this keyboard on. Again, with the USB-C on the left side, which is super cool, because you wanna shove it to the side of your desk, you don't have this cable up there as well. Love it on the side. Anyways, looking at the keyboard, you can see the RGB on with those keycaps, but let's focus on this screen over here with the knob. You can see right now you got date, time, and battery life. Great information, but the time is wrong for me because I can't find the software to adjust that stuff, and I don't know how to adjust it on the keyboard or if you can. A little bit of a stinker. Hopefully, you figure that out. Pressing down, though, you can see you come into here. You got effects showing the time or a GIF, and hopefully the camera can pick this up. I'll pull it closer. We'll get the GIF. You can see you got a little mouse running with this cheese, and then he is going to hit the tree. You can also customize that as well in the software. Unfortunately, again, I can't get it to work, 
But me personally, I would still use the time and a date. I think that's a great notification right up there. Going further into that, you can adjust the color of your RGB simply right up here on the screen. Love how simplistic it is. Your brightness all the way down, all the way up. Coming over here, you got speed as far as an effect if you have it on there. Language right out of the box, it is set in Chinese. And it was kind of tough to figure that out. I'm like, all right, let me cycle through which options. And then again, it came up to that right there. Oh dear, now it just saved it. So you go over here and then to English because right out of the box, it is set to that. So as you see right there, you can also adjust your volume. Let's go on and see the other options we have here. You got your layout, which you can go Windows or Mac. So cool over here. And then you can return to the main screen. And just talking about that Windows or Mac, I think that's awesome how they got the functions down here if you are on Mac already. You all know I use Mac and this is something I love being able to use them on both platforms. I mean, yet again, it's just wowing me from the features and functions and the customization of it and everything you can tweak in this cool screen is just blowing my mind right along with the great feel and sound of them switches. Now, unfortunately, this keyboard is not 100% perfect, even though everything I covered so far is phenomenal. But where it does fall off is the build of this keyboard. Keyboard. Not even so much with just the ABS keycaps, but the feel of it, it does feel budget. It is plastic and it has a significant amount of flex. As you see right there, I feel like if I can go strong enough, I can probably snap this in half. But of course, none of us are going to be sitting here flexing this keyboard like this. It's going to be sitting on your desk right there and you're going to be typing on it. Now on the bottom, as you saw, you got two levels of pop out feet. And if you take the keyboard and actually type on it like that, that is where you are going to notice that flex as far as it really kind of bouncing, not just because it's gasket mounted, which I'm spoiling the next segment, but again, the plastic frame, you feel the entire keyboard flex. And that's where the budget really shines with this keyboard is the build quality feels budget. But what I think we should do here, as I'm saying, it feels cheap is how about we take apart this keyboard and see what all is inside. All right, so I have not taken this keyboard apart yet, but what I'm really hoping is that it is just these eight screws on the bottom here, and I don't have to take apart all those keycaps. I just wanna see what's inside, so hopefully this is simple. Gosh, I haven't used this thing in forever here. I definitely need to charge it as I was running out of juice, but as I'm unscrewing it, you can see the top plate is actually coming out. So let me spin this around here. I'm sure I got to take off that knob, which, uh, okay, that knob is plastic, by the way. So, oh, I'm losing my screws. My screws are falling out on the bottom here. Let's go on and take this top bit off. Okay, we are plugged in. So let me go on and get that out. Oh, I'm sure I got to move that notch on the back. I don't want to ruin it by any means. So let's get that ribbon off there by pulling that forward, and it should slide right off. And here's our top bit, plugging in right to the top of our screen. Again, lightweight plastic, but then getting over on the board, make sure the rest of my screws came off there. Okay, so this middle bit seems to want to clip off as well, or is that gonna be the entire deal? All right, so we have some foam. Oh, we got more stuff plugged in. Okay, so we're gonna have to, let's, let's get back to that. Let me get this out here, which I can't. That's glued in. This ribbon, I'm just gonna slide out right there. And underneath, I can't seem to get the battery out. It's glued down there, and right up here, it's glued down as well. So that's a bit of a stinker. But down here, you actually have silicone, like a whole big piece of silicone right over there. There's your USB-C and your switch over here. We'll get this little plate in the middle. Again, there's that. And as you can see, very flimsy plastic there as well. Oh, here's that foam we had before. Very thin, thin layer of foam, but any bit is helping out with sound. We see some companies still not using any foam. Coming over here, again, with the keyboard being gasket mounted, hopefully the light's not washing that white out, but you got the silicone layer right here with the gasket mount. Can we pull those off? Yeah, so you can see, they're actually fitting right onto those arms right there. Little rubber gaskets, one, two, three, four. On the back side, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around the side. And then you got that nice big piece of silicone 
right in the middle. So we have multiple layers, silicone down there. We got the foam right here, got the silicone right there, and then also with our gasket mount. So as far as the internals of this keyboard, I think they did a great job. Nice big piece of silicone on the bottom, silicone in the middle, silicone dampeners for that uh, gasket mount. The only spot you can see that really chinched out is with that mid layer of dampening foam, which is incredibly chintzy as you can see through it here but it's just helping out with some of that ping and radiation from the switches going down there. And then the excess bits being very flexible, chintzy plastic. But like I said, that is where the budget shows. But as I showed you before, talking about the build feeling cheap and flexing it, you're not gonna be sitting there flexing your keyboard. So after everything we saw with this keyboard, we all can admit it is packing a punch. But how about that price tag? When you go to Amazon, they actually got it listed at 80 bucks. Let me be straight with you here. Honestly, no, I would not spend 80 bucks on this, even though it's packing a whole lot. But I feel like for 20 bucks more, you can really get a substantially better built keyboard. Probably not with all the features and functions, but built better. And I love a good quality built product. But right now, you can get an extra 30% off. And then also with some special promo code I have, which I totally forget what it is. I'll have it linked right down in the description below where I have the link to the product. I'll have that promo code there, which is going to save you another 10% off, which brings this keyboard down to 50 bucks. And at 50 bucks, holy smokes, this is an absolute steal. But of course, this video is just my opinion. I want to hear from you all out there. What do you think about this keyboard for 50 bucks? Would you spend a little bit more? Do you think this is packing enough? What else would you like to see? Or do you agree with me? Like at 50 bucks, this is packing a whole lot and totally worth it. I want to hear from you guys. So spark that conversation right down below in the comments. And all in all, thank you so much for coming by for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful. If it was, Please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.